<laughs> he know that song. Yeah, yo. Yeah, we on Boss hey. Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. <laughs> we be on fire, we be lit, lit. It's, it's a, a unique, unique hustle. Big, big, big shit. Big shit? Big shit? Big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's your unique house. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, outstanding, yeah, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know my dad. <laughs> uh, hey, man, we here today, man, in Los Angeles, man. My guy, can y'all just put us in the showroom? Mm-hmm. Man, we in, we on the West Coast. On yes, the West sir. Coast. We, thank you, know, you so much, Kenyatta. Man, thank you, man. You like Check our out. brother, man, you, from another mother, man. That's what's up. <laughs> you on Los Angeles Street, man. You on Los mm -hmm. Angeles, you man. Know. So, man, you fashion district. We going in now, man. Like, like, what made you? This is a beautiful establishment, man. When I came in, I was floored by the way you had it laid out, man. Real talk. What made you, you know, come to this location? How long you been here? What's up with this one? You've been in the clothing game forever. For ages. So, so Although just you like. you don't look it. No, ages. no, you look good. But the moves you made, what, how we end up here, man? Well, as it turns out, you know, I got I, my first, um, Sure, one was in the uh, the California market, which is across the street. Okay. Um, so I was brought in because I was a designer for a company called O and W. Okay. And one of the sales guys, you know, I, I befriended, you know. So after things have moved on in my life, he was like, "Man, you know what? You know, you should you should come become a rep." But I've heard no more like companies I've worked for tell me the same thing. Like, man, you should be a rep. You know, you you have a good you have a good gift to gab and yeah. So he brought me on, and then like within that same year, I ended up moving here, but on the fourth floor. Okay. And I, I had a partner. Um, she came in. She wanted to do a clothing line. So he was like, "Yeah, when we just do a showroom, I can bring the lines that I represent, and we can do your brand." And she and her and her father own M and M's on Crenshaw. Okay. Mm -hmm. And King, you know what I'm saying? So Patsy Brown, uh, uh, props out the uh, Patsy Brown. She's out in. Uh, in Vegas right now, so she's like a councilwoman or something like that. She yeah, 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 yeah. She's doing Shout some big out. things out there. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, she became my partner, and we, you know, we ran this whole thing down here. I had about like 14 brands. Uh, one of the biggest brands we had was Mesquite. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I remember that Mesquite. I love them colors that Mesquite used to have. I loved it. Crazy popping colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Mesquite, I was the first West Coast rep for Mesquite, period. Wow. Wow. So yeah. I got, yeah, I got on with that one. So in case people don't remember, this is a shirt that was all hand painted. So they yeah. literally yeah. hand painted yeah. every shirt. So their shirts was retailing for like 70, 80 bucks a pop. But that's crazy to be able to produce so much and it's hand painted. Yeah. How long did it take to get that merch done? Well, you know, the funny thing is I actually flew out to um, Philadelphia to see how it was how done. How was done? And they have a team of like, you know, like say for instance, you have like the head artists, right? It was like four of them, so they would kind of like create the the overall mm -hmm. theme, and then they would have guys kind of emulate. Just replicating it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they they did that in uh, in Philly, man, and these shirts was all handcrafted. How many pieces could they put out per order because it was hand painted? Did that limit? I'm sorry. I, I did that don't, limit anything? I don't know how many they was able to push out, but they pushed out a, a nice amount. And, okay. And I'm telling you, that was the the one experience that I have of actually sitting on the top as a rep because mm -hmm. I actually had one of the hottest brands ever. Yeah, um, I remember those days. I did like, at one show, I kid you not, I did about $4 million in one show. Mm. Wow. Four is that million? the most? $4 million. Is that the most you've ever done it in one show even up to today? By far. Really? Nothing compares to that, ever. Wow. And I'm that talking about like, that was when hell. magic was like four days solid. So I'm telling you like, I'm, I'm, and we opened up earlier. So I would be at the show at like seven o'clock, you know, seven o'clock setting up, ready to go. And we would have 20, cause I, the reason why I say 4 million, it was like, I had the Southeast and I had the West Coast. Mm -hmm. So then we would do uh, show, you know, we would do like classroom settings. So it would be like, you know, a good 20, 30 buyers. But they're buying a packet about this thick. 
Right. And you know, as soon as you buying like a dozen t-shirts, you're already, you know, mm-hmm. every so each time I'm getting a packet, that's a good, you know, 10, 15, 20,000 dollars because at that time it was the hottest brand. Mm-hmm. Period. Wow, you've seen these brands come and go, man. So, I mean, what, what people want to know like what's the popping brand right now? I know Positive Word dope as hell, but like what's the what's the one that cuz w- w- you remember when we would go to the show, Ed Hardy took over some crazy Coogee R- back R- in the R- day. Peter Christian out of Jay, you know, but like you knew the one that was hot cuz the whole damn thing was like you said Maskeen was the whole we would watch the motion of the people and it told you what was hot, all the buy you you've been there. You Absolutely. see them like 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 Miss Me Jeans mm-hmm. was like they were just bombarding the booth. But like, fashion, I think, is, is not the way how it used, used to, be to be. Because for the main fact that back then, if you buy an outfit, you got to buy the whole outfit in that brand with a hat and everything to match with it. Nowadays, to me, people are mix Mismatching. matching stuff and it's fly as long as it's fly that's all that matters so people are looking for bargains and they're going over here there they're not all about labels as much anymore that's what i'm seeing what from you think kenyatta because you consumer. you're in the middle of it i'll tell you the truth the truth is okay uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you an analogy i'm a master of analogies mm-hmm. right imagine if you went to one party that had like you know sean puffy combs and Jay-Z and, you know, right. Dave Dash and all these big stars, you know what I'm saying? Russell Simmons and Beyonce. Mm-hmm. That's party number one. Right? Mm-hmm. You know it's going to be lit. Right. Now you got a party where you got just a whole bunch of owners that don't even know how to market their brand trying to put product out to, cons- to the same consumer. It's not going to have the same reaction. These guys, the way they ran their business was way different. Mm-hmm. Their booths were like houses, literally, on the floor. They spent millions to show you what they're about. Mm-hmm. I mean, Rockaway had a booth with a with the Batmobile, like the real mm-hmm. Batmobile that wasn't even out yet. The movie wasn't even out yet, but you had the Batmobile. And they just had a section in the booth just for the Batmobile. Mm. Damn. Were you guys around that time? Like, mm-hmm. like, oh my God! Like the booths, like you would you would go to Magic, and the first bunch you would see would be like Russell Simmons. He's mm-hmm. taking pictures with everybody. And then you got I his, saw his daughters. <laughs> then you got his fine wife. And then you got Eve's got a brand. Everybody mm-hmm. had a brand. Like Everybody Eve had did. a brand. Uh, um, even Andre 3000 had a brand. So Everybody they had. The, so you watch it. And all, they would come out to the shows. Man, I'm telling you, you would go to these shows, and you, it it was, I wouldn't say a circus, but it was like something you've never seen before. People would actually fly out to Magic just to get mm-hmm. into Magic. I would probably get in like 10, 15 people on a, alone, right. like, hey man, I'm trying to get in, I'm trying to get in, man. But I met like Michael Jackson's father in there. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I mean, obviously Beyonce was there, Jay-Z was there. I remember when uh, she had that brand, but I didn't, know, I, didn't, didn't yeah, I didn't know that she actually came out to the show. Oh, no, that was, yeah. the that magic was before show. that for Rockaway, she probably was there for that as well. I'm no, tell she you. was there for Apple Bottom too, right? No, that's not her brand. Not no, Apple Bottom. What's Darion? Darion. Was she there for yeah, Darion? Exactly. Right. Yeah, she's a Darion. Okay. So, and that's actually the only person I really was starstruck on. I was like, really? Yeah, they came out of a party. We they was doing a party, and because uh, we always have to have parties at the new Afterwards, hotels. Afterwards, yeah. My God! So she walked, and she was about this close to me, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, damn, that's. That's that girl on stage. I mean, she does big things. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 ran, big through, things, Bobby. I ran through her whole entire resume. I was like, yo, she's standing right here. And you didn't even go, walk up to her and introduce yourself? Dude, you see this big 6'3". <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nigga, like a AZ with the lips. His lips were so big, bro. It's like his lips would punch you. Like It's like, I was like, I'm good. <laughs> I wasn't trying to look too hard, but she was right there. And I was like, damn, that's Beyonce. Wow. Man, that's a memory that many don't have. Like, that's something that you got to hold dear because I wish I could have seen her. I definitely got punched by her. <laughs> by yeah. God. Yeah, I'm saying, how you doing? I've never met him. I've never met him to that time. And But you're just looking up. You're like, yo, that dude is yeah, he the deal, the real deal. Yeah, he tall. And, he, you know what I'm saying? It's like. So that's brothers. the biggest person you've ever seen at a magic show? No. Hey, no, oh, who's the biggest no, person? No, yeah, probably. I mean, can you get bigger than that? Beyonce and Jay-Z? Russell Simmons? Not mm-hmm. really. I mean, who you want? Who you, Buster Rhymes? I, I used mean, to rock the Buster Rhymes. I mean, who, who else you want to talk who about? Who else is it? Mm-hmm. Master P used to come with 50 models. Oh, he did come by there? No, he had a booth. He had his brand. And he would bring 50 models to the show. 50. Wow. So he had all the chicks walking around the show. It was crazy. And then, like, you know, obviously you got Sean John. Yeah. So Sean Puppy Combs is in there. You know, you're talking car. I mean, I watched the whole project. So do you think you'll ever go back? Because 
we came in on the tail end of it where we did see a couple of celebrities there. You what, know? Was your, what was your first year of Magic? Um, uh, 2008. Oh, 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 no, yeah, 2008. 2008. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you t- you definitely was at Ed Hardy. Yeah, yeah, yeah that Ed was Hardy, that was Coogee, the time. all of that. Yeah, yeah. So the tail end We've of it. We've seen the tail end of it. Nothing like you experienced. Nothing like none of the people that you're talking about. Lil Wayne, we saw him Bird there. Birdman, Rick Ross, Birdman, uh, Rick Cameron, Ross, everybody been there now. All of those. Don't get yeah. it twisted, T.I. Don't get it twisted. The new people were there, but the people you're talking about was like the older you yeah. know what I mean? Like this one, it was real, and the money was lucrative. It was the, it was, it was on. Damon Dash was there. Yeah, we met him in the end, but, he, but he 2007, 2008 was still a good time for, right. for 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 the whole industry. I mean, the I mean, the clubs were still popping. I mean, you still had a lot of the experiences. I just think that the best time for Magic was when Fubu was at his height, because mm. they threw the absolute best, best parties party. ever at mm. the Rum Jungle at at the Mandalay Bay. Man, I mean. Oh, man. I, I, Kid Capri <laughs> was a DJ. Hey. These guys, what they would do, they would actually bring in a busload of models from L.A. Hmm. and have them just dancing with you. And you didn't know. You thought that maybe your game was just that tough. <laughs> dead. I'm dead. I'm, I'm, and, and, and it's like you had Kid Capri, and he was just killing the ones or two. Then they would have a whole hour open bar. Wow. No. Flyers Club with, with fire and all kind of stuff. And it was huge. And I'm telling you, man, you was dancing the whole entire night. And you was like, yo, this is the most amazing party I've ever been to. And I've been to every party. Now, I understand you. Because when we was at the uh, LRG party, he was so depressed. Because they wouldn't dance. And I remember Kenya, I was like, what is this? Like, they were just standing up trying to be cool. Kenya was like, this ain't nothing, man. Like, it, you remember it was yeah. inside. It had a pool inside mm-hmm. and everything. It was a dope look. But Kenyatta was depressed. Because he's seen way better. He's seen way better. That's the problem. Yeah. And I thought, it was, a, so I do thought you think it was a dope party, though. Because like, we got the pool in here. Because you have seen what he had seen. I'm like, he's like, man, he was just standing around. They ain't so really doing So do you think it's it ever going to come back? Do you think it, because you know evolution goes around and come right back around again. Well, so do you I, think it's going to, and when? See, the thing is, for me, I actually want this to happen. Because, like, you need somebody like myself or somebody of that era to, un- to let you understand. Like, I want Positive Wear to do that. Mm-hmm. I want Positive Wear to come back with a big investor, with big money, and just do something that big. Because I'm telling you, these guys are trying to penny pinch as much as they can to just, and don't understand. Like, this is supposed to be, it's like when you go to, like, a, a major convention center, let's say, like, the, uh, what is it, the, uh, the Comic-Con. Mm-hmm. You're not going to go there with a little booth at Comic-Con. Mm-hmm. Nobody's going to say nothing mm-hmm. to you. You want the biggest, baddest thing. For right. people. You know what I'm saying? Can you imagine going to Comic-Con and it just be just a couple guys with a couple tables? Mm-mm. You won't even look at it two times. You know what I mean? It's like you're not going to do that. So that's what they're doing to our industry right now. So when right. you go to Magic now, it's like you don't want to You don't want to have no models in there. So you're not bringing no models. You know what I'm saying? And it's Is like, it that they're, they're not allowing you all to do this stuff? They're stipulating it that way. stipulating it? No. No, people don't want to spend the money. Oh, they don't want. So, so you, you can sure come in. They can let, I don't think models yes. can walk that floor. So you can. Okay, so I you can, can be get. A model. You know what I'm saying? Like what I'm just saying. Like why? No, can't so you, you can come in with a bag and create all of the stuff that you're talking about that you that was done back in the past and start the trend again. Absolutely, I would do it that way. I wouldn't do it no other way. I wouldn't go to Magic or Project, and it not be a big presentation. Mm-hmm. You have to people. People gravitate, especially our culture. We gravitate towards the best. We don't want nothing look, but the best. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, the reason why I could say, like, I, I, I love a Sam, Samsung, but y'all be like, that ain't the best phone. The best phone's an iPhone. Which is a lie. But what I'm saying is, it don't matter. We want the best. We don't want second best. We right. don't want cricket. We want to we wanna make sure we pay for the, the highest creme de la creme. Mm-hmm. So you have to present that image. This mm-hmm. is why we gravitate to Gucci, Luch, you know, and Louis and all that. Why? Because when they do a presentation, it's huge. Mm-hmm. It's over the top. Mm-hmm. You know, it's billboards, it's movies, it's TV, it's everything. Now, hey, these guys are just like, man, they don't have no clue on how to market a brand. Not an ounce. And I'm trying to help them because I'm like, look, at the end of the day, as a sales rep, I got to help you do your brand better because I can't eat if you don't do it. Yeah. Like, you know, when, when uh, let's say, a coup when it, when it was at its height, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say around 2015. Mm-hmm. T.I. had a big bus, a big tour bus, wrapped, completely wrapped. In a coup. In a coup. And then that was getting publicity. And then he would also do 
you know, like uh, he would go to the stores and do signage and whatnot, and that was big. And then he had the most wanted tour, which was him, Lil Wayne, and Two Chainz. Mm-hmm. That was at that time was one of the biggest concerts, you know, touring. So you know that made us huge. We ate fantastic. So, so you tell me right now, where clothing is concerned, do you actually reap the benefits when you have a brand ambassador wearing it? that you know, people following and they see them wearing it, they'll be like, do you see your sales going up now? Cause I know back then it definitely helped, but in the industry that we're in right now, does that work still? I think that, okay, so if you're trying to build a brand, okay, you have to come from a, with a marketing aspect. Mm-hmm. Cause if you have a hot t-shirt or a hot dinner for the moment, that's for that season. What's next? What you got? I mean, I, I can tell you a number of brands that have came and went and be a young boy. That brand was popping. Where'd he go? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The baby. He had a brand. I mean, here's one of the biggest artists. Oh, all of us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The baby came out. He was at, at his height, and all of a sudden, boom, he got canceled. Where's the brand now? Mm-hmm. You know, it's, these brands don't even have a life longer than two years, if that. And it's because they try to do an item, they try to do something that's that's hot, and then it's like, ah, oh, but you you don't have a comeback. Mm-hmm. You got to have a design team. You have to have a creator that can create and morph into all the different fashions that pop up. But you have to market your brand. Right. You got to put it out there where people see it and in a lot of different areas. It's not just a influence. It's like all the influencers. You want all the influencers. You want you want every bit of exposure you can get. Instagram is not it. They're making it super tight for you to do anything on Instagram to make mm-hmm. any money off of. You got to spend so much money with them. Mm-hmm. But they're going to start putting a lot of people that have nothing to do with your industry just to, so you can look at the numbers and feel good about yourself. Mm-hmm. But the bottom line is what moves stuff is the people who wear clothes. They know what's up. If you see the front person that's fresh, it's like, man, that's a nice fit. And he's famous. You're going to figure out what that fit is. Well, you, you like, say it a mouthful because that's what you, you mentioned FUBU earlier. And that's what, uh, uh, that, what's that boy name to be on that Shark Tank? The, the boy was, yeah Damon John Damon. Damon John that's what he was saying about LL wearing that that FUBU hat in that commercial it blew him up it was like, it it was like Gap it commercial up, it blew it out the water that was a nationwide campaign for Gap and he, had, he actually it. had the FUBU sweatshirt on it wasn't just a hat he had FUBU but it was it was tone on tone he just had the FB they didn't know they didn't know they didn't know and it blew it out the, it, it, it was out free marketing yeah but at that time, everybody was, I mean, no matter, there was not one corner you was turning. If you turn on the TV, you saw FUBU. If you turn, open the magazines, it was FUBU. You know, the thing is, you know, the, I know people be like, oh, I, I prefer the phone over a magazine. But the, the fact of the matter is, is your phone is only showing you an image that big. A magazine is this big. You know, a buy magazine was like 11 by 17. So you see in detail, you know what I'm saying? So when you see an ad, you're seeing, boom, a big ad. It's like almost holding like a tablet that's 11 by 17, Mm -hmm. you know? And it's just that, you know, these guys don't know what they're doing. So the guys who are on the mic right now, the things that are running things right now are not the ones that should be running things. But they got the money, but the fact of the matter is, the reason why they're not doing nowhere near the numbers we were doing, just to give you a prime example, right? If you was a $20 million company right now, you'd be the biggest thing right now in the business. But $20 million for us was a beginner brand. Wow. You've been to New York frequently a lot. You're, you're on the West Coast. Um, both of y'all got set flavors on how you wear your apparel. Like, what, which coast? I know you from this coast, but and you know clothing. You know it. Um, when you think about the different ways that the clothes are being worn, uh, what do you prefer? How do you look at stylists? I think that, you know, a lot of people think for some reason that New York is the one who drives the fashion business, mm. but that's not true. That's why I asked. It's, <laughs> it's the West Coast. Mm. We run that. Is it the West Coast or the South? Because the South kind of... Are represents- you being biased because you're from up here? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I just want to hear. I want to hear you spill because I know you would know because you've given your life to this. Well, you got to imagine. Think about like, think about some of the biggest stars in basketball. Who's that? You know what I'm saying? LeBron James. Yeah. Well, that's West Coast. But the styles are different because reason why people always say New York because New York deals with a lot of cold weather, with the layering and the way how their their swag is. It. I love it. I love. I love the way how they dress. You know, and their fashion. LA is more. Beachy, you know, shorts everywhere, and no I matter love, the weather. I, and I love that. So and hold up, t-shirts. so hold up. So who's wearing the cabana shirts? New Yorkers or West Coast guys? West Coast. 
thank you. So cabana shirts, you know, matching shorts and all that, that comes from a, su- you know, a, mm-hmm. a, a place with some sunshine. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. winter, winter seasons, New York got, got Think y'all. about it, think about it, shorts and a hoodie, who do you think that came from? Yeah, that's a heated yeah. area, yeah. You got to have, because I, I, I hear it be sunny, but then be cold at night, so you got to have right. your sweatshirt on. You're not doing that in New York like that. You're wearing a straight that's... hoodie and some jeans and your little Timberlands, whatever, <laughs> but when it comes to the... <laughs> whatever. When it comes to the to the, the real fashion, think about the, the hoochie mom. I mean, the... The, the, the hoochie daddy. The, the hoochie daddy. daddy shorts. Where do you think that came that from? That came from y'all? You think it came from the South? You wouldn't found dead in the South with some shorts like that, right? <laughs> It came from the West Coast. It came from the West Coast. You look at LeBron James. No, it James. came from Atlanta. You look at you look at LeBron James. You see him wearing them, <laughs> them Hoochie Daddy shorts, playing basketball. Yeah, guys playing basketball yeah. now. If it's even shorter now, you yeah. know what I mean. It comes from the West Coast. I'm sorry. Yeah, T-shirts, yeah. all them bright colors and all that kind of. I think, like I said, I, I had to ask you that question because you yeah. one that could answer it. You know what I mean? Because of you and all did. your top denim brands come from where? New York. No, because Trues <laughs> come from here. I remember True Religion and all the ones that was yeah, yeah. Where's where's, where's uh, Laguna Beach? Even even Rock Revivals, all that Her stuff from out here. You know. So it's a it's a Christian out of your area. Yeah. From here. So it's a that's that was a good question because I, I I knew Where'd you, you would, get that rock and roll feel from. You ain't getting rock and roll guys out of New York. It's Hollywood. It's rock and roll Hollywood. Yeah. Come yeah, on, man. Yeah. I, I just had to ask that question because I knew you could be the best guy to answer that because you've been in it forever. For, mm-hmm. Like, like you, you one of those guys that, like I said, they sleeping on you a lot of time because of you the way you w- did early on with your brand. You didn't really just push it to where you you was too you 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 was romantic with your brand. You didn't want everybody to just take your brand and do this or that with it. You was. You you held your 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 brand to where you controlled the market with your brand. Yeah, it well, could have been a big mistake though, right? I mean, like I said, the only guys that were back in at that time was was guys out of Carl Kanai. Well, what I'm saying, like you had those guys, but that was the only West Coast company you can think of was was Carl Kanai mm-hmm. and Cross Colors, right. which was really Cross Colors right. and Carl Kanai. But yeah. the guys like the Fubus and all that, they was financed by the guys out in New York. New York, for sure. So they were the ones spending the big money. I wasn't trying to move to New York. I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I love my people in New York. My like my, my my dad's side of the family's from New York, you know. But nah, I couldn't do it. I couldn't live out there. I couldn't move out there. But for a lot of those guys that I know that actually got big deals, they all I would say ninety percent of the deals they got, they got they got hit the wrong way. What what are you looking to what do you think you'll see this time in Magic? You've been going there forever. Like what do you what do you think we're gonna see when we get there this time? Uh, I know it's been crazy, you know, I know I know it's been it, they stopped it for one time and, and it, during COVID I had never seen nothing like that. Uh, and and I don't know if you had, but it had been going on consistently so many years for it to stop and then start back. How much do you think that hurt it? That's one of the questions. But mm-hmm. secondly, what do you expect to see there? You know. Well, I don't really expect anything anything different from what I saw last, last time. Year. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just think that you know a lot of. In fact, there's a few there's a few brands that were there last time and not showing up this time. Wow. Because so it's getting scantier and scantier. I mean, last year, you know, we we. A lot of brands made a lot of money that they shouldn't because it was a lot yeah, of government it money. Was a lot out of, there. It was a lot of money being passed out at PPP. The streets had the money, man. <laughs> we had that PPP money all day. It was crazy. I don't know if you, man, you, were you guys open during that time? No, no. we've we been conservative. You, man, y'all missed out on some good money. I ain't gonna lie. I am not gonna lie. It looked like the whole penitentiary would show up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not even lying, man. It was a store out in Linwood I visited and we were just tra- chop, chopping it up and I've never seen more than maybe like five people in the store, you know, but they was flooding in this store. I, it was so uncomfortable. I had to leave. I was like, man, this is too much. Wow. This is like straight county jails up in here spending this bread. Wow. <laughs> I kid you not, man. So it's like, yeah, I think a so, lot of people made so much money in uh, last year, but now that, now that the money stopped, now people are like, all right, so what are we competing against? Reality stick. It's not just that. It's not that we, like, the clothing brands are competing against other clothing brands. The clothing brands are competing against iPhones, you know, diamond chains now. Now you got to get checked on your chain. Dudes is really checking if you got real diamonds on your chain. So you can't have that little cheap little $10 yeah, chain. Yeah. You got to have that one seven. That bit boy. Yeah, so you got to have that. Watches came back. So now you got the, you know, diamond studded Rolexes. 
you know, that's a big deal. So mm-hmm. these guys are walking around pretty much with like two, three hundred thousand dollars on their person. But where clothing is concerned, or any company right now, a lot of companies are saying Amazon is really running a lot of people out of business because everybody likes to go to that one-stop shop, go online, click that order, here it comes. Safari, it's, it means so far as stores are concerned, like the brick and mortar. Stores, um, clothing brands that are not on there because you know they do sell clothes too, the apparel. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just they do both high gotta, end and the lower end. I think it goes back to marketing. It goes back to market. But the thing is, we're talking about like in my industry, I've always been in the in the streets. You know what I'm saying? So I've always gravitated towards that urban customer that was like on the next fashion trend. You know what I'm saying? The guys jumping on that spins big bread. You know, these guys are walking home. You know, they they out here putting. You know, you see that stuff in the videos when they laying that out like that. They laying that out buying some jeans for real. That was okay. before they was fanning that on Instagram. That was mm-hmm. like, and they just adding up so they can get that whole pile of clothes they just laid up on there you know Mm -hmm. there's some real ballers out there because people don't know these these little youngsters you know when we was coming up in the game are millionaires hood millionaires but they got cash and they got spending big got it niggas had it i i remember it was some times when some brothers had it in them streets where i know you know you got a meal ticket but he he do what he want to do with it but he got it yeah, so PPP was like the the new version to to crack. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, just having that money for that quick for that quick runaround. I mean, the amount of hustles. They, I think they I think they stole somewhere like close to 250 billion dollars of the tax money. So so mm-hmm. we with that being said, you don't feel like this is going to have the impact that it had before the last time. Uh, and yeah, I could I could agree. But as far as what what last time you was there, was it any brand that stuck out to you? Outside of the ones that you, of course, look at every day. Well, okay, so in my industry, that's your cookies, that's your BBC, yeah, uh-huh. ice cream. You know, those are the what I consider the, the Premium, guys. Premium, but the big boys? No, those are ones I compete against. Because, yeah. you know, I do a coup, I do a hustle game, we do um, Code of Individuality. Code, yeah, you know, yeah. And uh, we also picked up um, Tango Hotel. Whoa. Okay, so, um, so those are, so, but the guys that we compete against is the BBC, the ice creams, and the cookies. And at that time, Cookies was doing pretty, you know, doing pretty yeah, good. Yeah. Um, so their booth was probably the busiest booth. But again, it wasn't a big to do. It was a regular 10 by 20 booth with some chairs, you know, not a build out, nothing. And I was like, I can't believe that even a brand this big, this is how you guys are going to do what you're going to do. You know, because you remember we were cool. It's like we used to own a house. I used to kill it. Used to kill it. I was proud. There, you know. to, I was proud to be able to get into the cool booth. Like I'm like like when you go to the club like Nino and them back in the day. You never watched New Jack City when oh oh y'all gonna frisk me. Like this is where you had to be. Most niggas was stuck outside. Hey man, I know him. No, nah, I don't know that cat. Like he couldn't get in. Yeah, this nah, is the way it real. was. Like I was like, no, nah, I don't know that cat. No, nah, I never did. I don't play those games, man. I'm in here with my people, you know, because we really rocking. And 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 I took pride in that. And then you come back, and then you see like it just disintegrated to this. I'm like, man, this it is depressing. Looks, it looks like it, it kills lo- me, man. It looks like they put us in a um, like. like Back in the day, they used to have a section called a new edition section. Yeah. So before you would get on the main floor, they had another section for all the new brands, and they yeah. called it a new yeah. edition section. Yeah. We spent even more money than these guys yeah. are spending. They're like, look, let's just get a rack. I'm like, no, don't do that to yourself, man, because I don't know. For me personally, like, I think presentation says everything. You know, I've had this showroom, and I, and I spend good money on this showroom. I know. For a reason, you know, for presentation, you know, for things like this, you know, for people walk in here and they're like, oh, they're going to take you a little bit more serious Serious. now. They're like, oh, okay, this guy's not a, it's not a game, you know, because I don't like to talk a lot. Yeah. Like, so it's like, yo, I do this, I do that. It's like, look, man, you need to know, you don't don't know me. If you know me, then you know what's up. But I don't have, I don't want to sit here and be like, I'm braggadocious. I try to live a, a peaceful, humble life, life, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to do all no, that. No, you, you that definitely. But I love this business, and I don't want to see it fail. I want it to keep going, keep thriving, because my customers ain't having left. They still there. They yes, still like. I mean, we still like the. The thing is, a uh, clothing is is what I consider uh, one of the fastest gratifications you're gonna get. You know, you get your brand pair, brand new pair of Jordans, or whatever. Somebody gonna say something to you. It's gonna make your day. Just like when you get your hair done, your made, your, you know, your nails done, whatever uh-huh. the case is, you're like, yo, this is why you spend that bread. Right. You know, women are spending how much for a weave? Come on, man. Let me ask you Hundreds. this. Hundreds. You, you got a couple of sons. You got sons, right? So could you ever see your, your sons getting into the apparel business? You know, I've, I've actually introduced uh, 
Yeah, actually, I, I do. I think the funny thing is both of my sons are very fashion oriented. You know what I'm saying? One of them actually um, does the haircuts in the house and all the twists and all the braiding and stuff. But they stay fresh and they stay, you know, on the, on the current trends. Look at their dad. So I've actually, you know, so, but you know how it is. It's like, I'm the dad. You can't, you can't be cool. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Cool. It's impossible. You know what I'm saying? Even when you dress cool. They don't, don't look at you like that. Mm -mm. No, mm -hmm. no, no, no. But their swag is different, and I think that I think if anything, they're gonna be entrepreneurs because they kind of see the hustle. Yeah. But I've actually brought my oldest Jalen into it, um, and so he's actually, you know, seen me at work. You know, I just wish that he seen me at work when we was at our height. Right now, yeah. I gotta guarantee, I gotta tell you, this is probably the hardest. This year has been probably the hardest I've ever seen it on this business. Wow. Yeah, but well, one thing about it, 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 it could turn at the blink of an eye. Uh, yeah. But right now, with the way it things are, we, I think that's the that was a boss talk move was because of the way it looked. It's like, what are we gonna do to maintain? But that's I love the business. This. I like, I love this culture. It ain't really about the money as much as about the culture and about our people seeing us in position. That's more important than anything. To see you in position here, it does everything for me. I've been sitting here for a few days now. I hadn't seen another brother come by here. I'm, I'm just being real with you. You can see that it's a need for this five people, bro. Oh, absolutely. And that's the part where I kick in the way I was is. It's like, they gotta see this, man. Because yeah. if they don't, they don't even know why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because you need to see us in a position to where you can be respected and you can see that we can do this. Well, it's great that you're able to control your media. This is your show. Yeah. You know, nobody's sitting there on top of you in, in your ear talking about, hey, t ask them this question. No, mm -hmm. hell no. The only, one, only thing that's asking that question is your heart right there. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and your creative ways are coming up some of the best questions <laughs> ever, man. <laughs> See me on it, man. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, man. We be having some good times, man. We didn't, oh, man. We'd have some moments, man. Like, and a lot of times it's just, like I said, it's God more than anything, but just our people, man, getting to be able to speak with them being able to understand our ministry and trying to help the people that's what it's all about but then the service being servants like you're doing here having something to where our people can come and be proud of hey man this is who we are look at how you dress man look at look oh, at how the oh, cut, not, not just the boss I mean, talk not I mean, just oh, the boss talk oh boy no the boss talk is dope but I'm just saying every time I seen you you saucy man like you I too, though. No, no, I'm it. okay. I love that jeans outfit you had on yesterday. It I'm went sure hard, that. too. I'm it went sure. hard he had every a, time. Hold on, hold on. He had the shoes that matched man, jeans outfit. Man, he's not playing. On. Like, this is Kenyatta Sands, man. I, I mean, he, hey, hey, man, this dude, they're different. And I love that, man, because I know that you say fashion. You serious about it. And you can't do nothing but, but respect it. Nah, I've seen, I, I kid you not, I've seen this industry pretty much at its height for I've been going to Imagine since 93 not wow that's myself, crazy Imagine I was 20 93 I was yeah I was 23 at that at that age 23 man, no no people Magic. gonna start calculating 23 23 man I've seen it all but the thing is the thing is I've been to the parties I've been you know we used to you were talking about Mike Tyson we would go to the parties and be rubbing elbows with Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson. you know what I'm saying the young Mike Tyson not the old one the, the young, young dude, the young you know dude that, like, that pit bull that, I was about to say that pit bull I mean Carl <laughs> Kanai I went to a party at the Rio, man, and we have like two story suites, two story suites, not just a room, two story suites, and we have them directly across from one another, and we're sitting there flipping shrimps all night. I mean, this is the kind of stuff we was doing. What's the wildest thing you've seen at any of those celebrity parties? Like how juicy you want it? <laughs> I want it way juicy, dripping, dropping on the no, floor. No, just give a little yeah. sauce. She don't give it too much. Yeah, I, I don't think. Just I, give me some. I don't think it was any juicy. I mean, we're just, I don't know. We were just young. And it was a fun. movement, man. <laughs> That's what, like, you, you see me now as this, this dude who's in his you know, 50s. But um, you got to imagine, I was once a young man, you know what I mean? And, you know, we was, man, we, like, okay, I'll give you an example. Like, we used to do a, a, a suite, right, at the uh, Mirage. Mm -hmm. So our situation was just about as freaky as, it, you know, some of the other situations. Because, okay. like, we would have, a, so our spot was like 2,000 square feet. You know, with the marble floors, we had the TV that came, you know, at that time, the TV that came out the cabinet. Oh, okay. You know, the big mirrored, you know, ceiling and all that, you know, with the big jacuzzi bathrooms and all that. So we would throw our own parties and they would come to our parties, like, mm -hmm. the, you know, like, like the, like Carl and I would come to our joints, you know what yeah. I mean? So we actually, I actually created the, I actually had a thing called the Black Magic. Mm hmm. 
So what we did was, uh, it was me, the first time we did it was uh, Cross Colors was in the building. And then we had Maurice Malone. You remember that brand, Maurice Malone? Yeah, I do. I do. You remember Maurice Malone? Mm -hmm. That was like one of the top denim brands we had during that time. So so Maurice Malone and myself, we did a, a, a the suite together. Maurice Malone wrote a million dollars in that in that suite. Mm. Yeah. A million a million physical dollars. Yes, he wrote a million dollars. Uh, Ernest Pratt out of Detroit came down and ran at it, and we was in there together. Me, you know, Positive Wear and Maurice Malone. And we mm. was in there doing our things. And then eventually, like, brands like, you don't probably know about brand, but School of Hard Knocks. Okay. Mm-hmm. You remember them? Mm-hmm. Anyway, so, um, so we would do these things. So eventually that turned into a whole floor of, you know, up-and-coming brands oh. that we did, and we called it the Black Magic. Oh, okay. So you would go there, and this was like, you know, these suites were like, I would say almost two stories high. You can kind of, they're, they're the ones at the very top of the Mirage Hotel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you see, it's tall, and you can see the whole, the backdrop is the whole Vegas you know, marble floors, you got the kitchen and all that kind of fun stuff. So we had, that was a hell of a time. Because mm-hmm. we wow. would stay there. You, you get what I'm saying? So the party would last. All night. All night and then morning oh, time. Yeah, morning time too, yeah. You feel me? It's so, a big party. Because back in those days, we didn't be like, oh, you will get you a room. No, we all staying in the in this room. So the whole the whole crew, wherever we came through. so it Kicking was, it. Man, you know, it was, the guy, man, I, RIP to him, I can't remember the name, the one that was, he was with Mesquite at the end, the, the guy. AZ. AZ, man. That's my dude. But see, you know, when, when I used to go, AZ was one of those guys that, that I expected to see at the show, bro. Dude, like, but, I, I, I tell you, me and him were at Black Expos before there was Magics. You feel me? Yeah. Me and him was there. Like, so, when you say there's just somebody that, that actually was there since the beginning, it was like me, him, Carl Kanai, Carl Jones, you know what I'm saying, uh, TJ Walker. Those were the, to me, and then even uh, the Shabazz Brothers. A lot of people don't know about the Shabazz Brothers, yeah. but Shabazz Brothers was the first street hustling t-shirt guy. So they yeah. had all the Martin Luther Kings and all that. So, you know, a real real talk. We used to do these um, Black Magics, out of, not, not Black Magic, but um, uh, Black Expos in New York. And that was a huge event, man. I mean, you're talking hundreds of thousands of people show up. AZ's thing was he was a uh, red, red man's cousin, wasn't he? Well, I don't know about that, but yeah, I know he that was, he, he was one of those guys' cousin. I know he told me that. I, well, I mean, he ran with Carl Kanai. So him and Carl Kanai was like, that was, that was one set. You know what I'm saying? So you think about Carl Kanai, he had to put the AZ in there. So he, he saw the hype. I mean, Carl Kanai was probably one of the biggest brands ever. And Carl Kanai did it right. Like, he, his presentation was crazy. And then AZ seen all that, you know. Man, and you know, I met Carl Kanai uh, through hanging around you, really, hanging around the, and just meeting him and talking with him. And now to talk to him on the phone is crazy how it's just like you in this game, but you don't know the essence of how important these bl- building blocks have been to keep the culture going, to keep the brands going. And these guys, you guys are patriarchs when it come down to that, man. So you should be proud of that. Castle understand that when these guys were hot, there wasn't a block you can walk down without seeing somebody wearing some car or not. That's yeah, I how, remember. That's how, killed yeah, it. that's how tight that was. So you, you talking about like, oh, you might see one guy wearing this t-shirt, that t-shirt. I'm talking about the whole entire culture rock, cross colors, car canine. Then when FUBU came and blew it out the box, everybody was wearing an FB football yeah, jersey yeah. all day long. And you know, Rocker wears the Sean Johns and all that. And then the LRGs came into the world. Yeah. Man, I mean, you know, this, this culture nowadays can't even hold a candle to any of that. No, and, and you can't, man. And, and when you look at just like some of these brands, man, that they fly by night, you can tell the essence is not there. I, I, I seen some brands come and go. I mean, shout out to Boosie. When he first came home from prison, he was rocking out. He had Mike Wagman. They was, he was doing this thing. You, you, a cool booth was big as hell then. And yeah. I was like, man, I, when I talked to him, I was like, man, I, I like your brand, man. I said, I'm going to rock with it. He looked over there. I was like, but I ride with a cool. I said, cool. They show me so much love, man. I was, and I told this dude that. And Boots was like, nah, a cool, whatever, man. That T.I. brand, I'm going to be way, you know how you do. I'm going to be way bigger than that. You'll see. And I was like, man, you got to come on with it, bro. Because I, I knew the team and the structure, the backbone that was in a cool compared to what he was dealing with. And in order to do what you guys actually were able to accomplish, you have to have a infrastructure like crazy. You have to have some people who are breathing 
breathing and living this this stuff, man. And he didn't understand that because you can look at something on the outside and you could think in your mind that, that I can do this, but you don't understand the the Ti cool. Don't get he's a hell of a rapper, but that infrastructure that you guys had or have, the, the one that you guys had created when Lisa was there, I'm telling you that it was to be respected, Ralph. And I knew what was behind it. And then you guys on the forefront, you and Jerry and them, I knew it wasn't gonna be easy to cope with because y'all heart and the way y'all come from, it's totally different. I done had them conversations with Ralph and he like, man, I remember I did this and Ludacris this and we, me and him just be talking about the old times. He yeah. came through a lot to get to where he had as well. Yeah, just he was like there. you. He was it's there. like, y'all dope, bruh, in the way y'all get out. He had, that, he had that real brand RP55. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the real. I mean, RP fifty five was you know, well, Reno Perry. Was yeah, yeah. You know? So I remember I, I used to, um, you know, I have a couple of pictures with Ralph when he was, you know, when he was building that brand, and, wow. then, and then he came up with you know the uh, what was it? Um, I forgot the other brands he had. Uh, um, Azure and he had Indigo yeah, Red. Yeah, Azure for sure. And he had some. I mean, the Indigo Red's booth was like really, really nice. I mean, I you know I didn't get a chance to see what the brand looked like because I think for a lot of these companies they don't know what is they don't know how to build that brand on the west coast yeah you know a lot of these guys they're they're good with the south they're good with maybe the the north the northeast but when it comes to uh when it comes to the west coast this is why you know i do what i do because i understand this business a lot better than than i would say um a lot of these companies don't understand the kind of money is here if you, if you blow up here you can make some some good money yeah plus the exposure is here yeah, I mean, think about it. All the TV shows, you just had another big time actor in here, like that, and that was like nothing to you. But this yeah. guy is like everywhere. Yeah, you yeah. know. And then it's like, you know, these are guys that are walking down the street every day. It's like yeah. there's so much production. I mean, you had Kenya Ware up in here, man. Yeah, come on, dope. man. I mean, she's doing all kind of stuff dope. with, you know, with with Bobby Brown and you know the Mask. What is it called? The Mask. Uh, the Mask Singer. The Mask Singer. singer. The mass the mass singer. singer yeah. I mean, but it's just like. Man, everything is out here, man. And it's funny how companies don't really realize how much opportunity you have right here in Los Angeles. Because a lot of these companies are, the companies are now that are pretty much based in the East Coast. And they just, they don't have the respect. They don't think that, they don't think that, you know, it's popping out here. It's like it's popping every day. In fact, I can spend every day just talking to stylists, getting on the next show, the next show, the next show. Just on that, and on top of the fact, the Lakers out here, the Clippers out here. Some are like, I'm just thinking, you, you laughing, but to think about that for a that second. That's crazy. Like the, the impact that's out here is crazy, and I don't think people give it this just like you're saying. I agree. Like, look at Russell Westbrook's brand. It's gonna blow up. Yeah. You know, honor the honor honor the uh, honor the what is it called? I've got this. Honor the gift. Honor the gift. This is a brand. It's gonna blow. That's blowing up now. I mean, it's coming out there right now. There's a brand called the Gallery Department. You ever seen that? Those t-shirts. No. Man, them t-shirts was everywhere. All it says, it says Gallery Department Hollywood. That's it. It's a $500 t-shirt. Woo! Wow. And that's all it says. And he's getting it. What's the quality like? Haynes Beefy T. <laughs> <laughs> that boy is a genius. $500. And he's getting $500. Yes. Who's buying it? All the celebrities because I'm telling you, all the stylists are out here. All the, you know, you think the NBA has changed into a fashion show. These guys really spend big bread on their shoes and their gear and their stylists. And they're getting their fashion from here, from LA. Yeah. Wow. Do you, um, man, um, do you think that we can turn this thing around? Do you think that God just be, may be leaving a gap so we can get in position? Like, maybe they don't see it in New York or maybe they don't see it in other places, but because we are able to see it here ourselves, Maybe we can change the mode. That five hundred dollars T-shirt, a damn show, do it. <laughs> Listen, man, marketing it tells everything. Marketing, right? Marketing it goes everything. all the way back to marketing. Because think about okay. it, man. You, you, you got to think about it like this, man. You know, we do a lot for our, for our ladies and for our attraction to ladies. You feel me? And the bottom line is that you know anything that can speak for you, you're gonna spend that bread on. Because these women are definitely checking out your fit. They, they're counting out everything you've got. You know what I'm saying? Like, she might look at a guy and be like, oh, I like the way you put that together. But these young ones nowadays, they're like, hmm, Louis Belt. You exactly. got that. You got they that look at the shoes first. What kind of shoes you wearing? Yeah. Okay. You, you got those, uh, okay, Balenciaga's on. You got that Amiri jeans. Hmm, okay, so that's four, five hundred, two thousand. Okay, you got the, oh, I see the bag you got. You got that Burberry bag. That's it's 1500 going It's going down. And it's like all oh, the T-shirt. Okay, what kind of T-shirt he rocking? I'm like, you know what I'm saying? It's like Gucci, and then it's like the hat. I mean, it's like, it's weird. You see the chain and all these girls. It's like, yo, this dude's a walking crib right now. 
Damn. Man, hey, thank you for coming on the show, man. We love Kenyatta, man. Kenyatta opened the doors up in here for us, man. We downtown L.A., man. Vision he, sales, hey, baby. Man, it, hey, man, every time we've been here, he brought us last time when we was over. What was we at? We was at the Playa, Playa Vista at the Playa Vista. Matt Arca. Yeah, Matt Arca. Now, now here we are. We we definitely at home base right now. This, I feel this is real good. Vision Sales headquarters right Check now. Check it, man. Hey, man, my boy Kenyatta Sands, man. We love you. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. Boss Talk. Where the bosses talk. That's and what's we up. Out. <laughs>